Okay, so it is so I'm so pleased uh, that you could join us this evening. And this is, as, as you know, uh, at the start of my time here in the NBA, I spoke about how I was going to use the first 100 days to listen and bring that to the NBA council or trustees. And this is the end product of that first 100 days. So just in case you, you aren't aware of us, this is us as the regional ministry team. That's myself. I'm the transitional strategic regional minister. Now that's a committee job title if ever you found one. Uh, and then uh, we're joined this evening as well by uh, Paul Revel, who's the mission enabler uh, regional minister. And he's going to be sharing uh, a little bit later about mission in the, in the uh, vision of the MBA and Linda Donaldson, who's our hub tutor based at Cranor Hall, looking at training and formation. You'll be hearing from her as well. So, so that's us. You can, I will let you know, you can get to us on via our contact details on the website. We are always welcome to come and share with you in all your different church activities. So please do engage with us in any way. So, as I said, when I started on the 1st of September, I kind of went for this launch of the first 100 days. And of course, the historians among us will know that that's what um, presidents do in the US. They kind of look at that first 100 days. And I decided I wasn't going to rush through loads of decisions in that 100 days, but to spend the time listening, listening to what was already going on in the NBA and how people uh, wanted the NBA to be developed, of course, the NBA being the Northern Baptist Association. This was really building on the listening process that had happened before the creation of this job title that I have. And so um, we will be producing a summary of the report. The report is 65 pages long. So we thought we'd just do a summary of that for you uh, to digest. Everyone says, yay, if they went on mute, but there will be a summary version. And so this is just to let you know, this is how we conducted the listening. And I want to start out by saying thank you. Thank you so much for participating. I was overwhelmed by the amount of people that filled out questionnaires, who engaged, who met me for coffee, who invited me around for meals, who came to the webinars and the different events that we hosted. What you will see in the report and this and moving forward, hopefully, is a build on on all that you shared. Have I included everything? No, probably not. But I've tried to pull out the common threads that I've heard in all of these things. And just so you know, I wasn't just chatting. We also did uh, some observing of meetings, uh, reviewing our governance and an audit of the minutes and administration and communication. That was fun. OK, so what were we hearing? Well, I was hearing a lot of personal experiences from different people, personal experiences from those in the church, in our churches and those in ministry. We heard about how ministry has been developed over the time of the MBA, how mission has been engaged and how we relate with the current vision. In this hearing, we heard that actually some people had a fantastic time in the NBA. They thrived and flourished, and we are really grateful for that. We also heard that for some people, life in the NBA has been difficult. And if we're honest as a council, as trustees, that was hard for us to hear. But I'm really grateful for those of you that shared your experience. Ministry. Um, again, there were some real highs of how ministry had been provided for, mission enabling. However, some of what we heard meant that we fell short of what we were expected to do, both nationally and regionally. And there was a lot of learning points that we built in to where we are now with our vision and values. We looked at the current vision and its priorities and assessed whether they were really owned by you as a church. And unfortunately, I guess because they've been in place for eight years, there was a sense where it wasn't really owned. In looking at the governance, we discovered that actually 
there's been some wonderful, wonderful things and people have served in fantastic ways. But there were a few errors in how we were conducting ourselves and we weren't in line with our bylaws. We looked at how we support and communicated and I love the fact how every single one of you engage with our emails and support each other in such a wonderful way. But we also learned that we had a bit to do in modernising us and making us relevant for the 21st century in mission and ministry. And so we really want to start by just acknowledging those that have felt pain. We do this not because what went on in the past was wholly bad. It wasn't. There were some great things. You're all here this evening because of great things that have been supported in your ministry in the MBA. But we have to acknowledge that when one of us hurts, all of us hurt. And so as a, as a council, as trustees, we really want to own that. In the coming weeks, we're going to be uh, apologising for the times when we've got it wrong trying to model something of a humble spirituality. And we're gonna use that as a springboard for the way forward, where we wanna be. And this is the exciting part that I share with you this evening. We wanna go forward. Why do we wanna go forward? Because we want people to come to know the transforming power of Jesus Christ in their communities. That's what we're here for. That's why we do life together. That's why we worship. And so we are hopeful that all of the, what we're putting together in terms of structural differences, in terms of our values, in terms of how we conduct ourselves, we're hoping that this will enable and support and encourage you in your churches and your ministries. One of the things I've spoken uh, quite a lot about is the fact that one of my key tasks is to bring us into the 21st century. And so I looked at our logo and the way we communicated. And so I'm so pleased to be able to announce to you our new logo. It looks similar to the one before, and we've kind of tried to keep the theme of it, but the clip art has gone. We have created this so that it can be used in various uh, situations. Also, it's quite good to hashtag the MBA in all of our social media as well. We're hoping that this will provide a focal point. And if you'd like to use the logo on your website um, and other things to show that you are partnering with us in the gospel, then please do contact us for the conditions uh, in which to use the logo. I'm also extremely grateful for uh, Matt uh, at the design team in Baptist Together for providing us with this. And our vision, our vision is very similar to what it was before, building together for God's kingdom. This actually wasn't our vision. Our vision was about two sentences long about being passionate and it was wonderful but wasn't owned. What we had in our old logo was a kind of a tagline saying, building together for Christ's kingdom. And so we wanted to expand that in the full breadth and wholeness of who God was and actually say, if the churches know that and own that, then let's embrace it. We want to build together. We notice that we don't build on our own. We build together as a movement and we want to see God's kingdom come. We also wanted to move away then from a mission statement and other statements. What we wanted to do was to create a set of values that infuse and it like penetrate everything we do. A set of standards and values that we hold everything against. We do this because it's part of our values and it enables our vision. And so I'm pleased to bring to you our kind of six values. And they are centered on mission, recognizing God is at work in the world. And we have the privilege of partnering with God to see lives and communities transformed by the presence of Jesus Christ. Everything we do as an MBA should be centered on mission. We want to be creative in our approach. 
We believe in a creative God and therefore everything we do as such as an association should reflect God's creativity in doing new things, stepping out of familiar ways and embracing the adventure that God has for us all. We want to be relational at our core. We seek to be an association that sees God in all people. God in all people and all places. We're committed to building relationships that offer support and encouragement and challenge. We want to be spirit led in our practice. We seek to rely on God's spirit and scripture to inspire and infuse the structures, governance and prayer life of the association. We're committed to justice. As God's people, we experience a holy discontent, discontent that calls us to work for God's justice in our communities, churches, region and world. And we want to seek well-being. We seek for our association and churches to be a place where people can experience a place of listening, encouraging and guiding in all stages of their mission and ministry. Our hope is that these values will be everything that we measure ourselves against. Now, if you're anything like me, you're going to think, wow, that's massive. Are we going to get that right all the time? Probably not, but we're going to strive to be that. It's not only our values, but it's who we want to be as a people and organisation. And of course, these values then lead us on to priorities. And we want to acknowledge that our priorities are not going to stay the same all the time. But for this season that we're in, and I don't know how long this season is going to last until God kind of calls us to something uh, else and something new. Our priorities are going to be these four things. Developing and investing in leadership. This is including continued ministry, ministerial development and lay leadership. We really want to focus on children, youth and families being right at the core of our MBA family. Mission pioneering and planting, exploring new ways of doing and being church, communication, an emphasis on this being a new season for us all. And so these are the things that we're gonna be investing our time in and seeing our values outworked in. And so I just wanna talk briefly about governance and communication because I know that that's what you were all coming here for this evening. In terms of governance, I think governance is a really exciting thing. It's a structure in which we allow God's spirit to move. And we want to be flexible with that. It was John Wesley that said we hold things loosely in our hands. And so we're looking at, as we change direction to these new values, we're looking for new trustees and new ways of doing things. And I'm really grateful for the applications we've had in. And so over the coming uh, months, you're going to be hearing about those that have um, offered themselves to be trustees once they've gone through our safer recruitment. And then you'll be uh, kind of uh, discerning whether they are key people to join our team to take us in to the next stage. So that will be our AGM in April. Please do uh, make time to come to that meeting as we share together. Communication, we've already developed our website and um, we will be developing that more and uh, from after this evening it will go live with all the new logos uh, and new information we're also kind of upping our game in our social media and we want to engage with you and support you in how you communicate in a digital world which is really exciting and so uh, briefly want to talk sorry i talk very fast so you're gonna to have to forgive me this will be on youtube these are the different ways that we're going to focus in the next 12 months of how we will support ministers and ministry this really is important for us as we kind of develop pastoral care with each other and pastoral care we want to be not just for the the ministers and church leaders and cyf pastors and workers but also 
for those ministers that are married for their spouses as well and we're engaging with Thrive which is a national kind of platform uh, for spouses to relate and so we're going to be really uh, encouraging you in that and we're going to have an online webinar event where they're going to come and share with us on that in February. We're going to be looking at the continuous ministerial development that's needed, that regular input. We've already uh, put out our website, we've got a program of webinars to resource and equip your leaders. Forgive me, I've put reigning new leaders, oh my life, spot the dyslexic in the room. Apologies, we want to train new leaders, we want to seek to train and equip new leaders for the North East. We want to develop a particular support for enabling millennials and women to flourish in our association. Pioneers and chaplains, Paul's going to speak a bit about pioneers in a bit, but again, we're going to have regular specialised support in the coming months for those. And children, youth and families, CYF, you are part of our family. We acknowledge that in the past, sometimes uh, CYF workers have been an add-on, a tag-on. And we want to ask for your forgiveness in that. And we're going to support and encourage you. We're going to do that by clustering you together, by providing webinars for your continual ministerial development as well. More information about this will be in the summary report and on our website. Well, I'm now going to uh, re-spotlight uh, Linda, who's going to talk to us about our training and formation. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everybody. So ministry recognition training and the newly accredited ministers phase of, um, of, of ministerial life is all connected. And we, uh, while it is all connected, we're just seeking to bring that all into more coherent um, line with each other and also into line with national um, processes. So ministry recognition, basically ministry recognition is where it starts. That leads to training, which leads hopefully via ordination to the NAMS process and then actually back again to ministry recognition. So ministry recognition is where it starts, and that's the process for discerning a call to ministry with the individual and their churches. Um, that happens at association level, and um, currently we have three to four people in conversation, and we have interviews booked for the 26th of April. Once people have come through that process successfully, then they may approach a Baptist college for training. Mostly at the moment in this area, it's the it's Northern Baptist College um, that provides that training in conjunction with Cranmer Hall in Durham. And that generally is a three year period for people. Currently, we have five ministers in training. We have two non ministers in training. So they're um, people who attend Baptist churches, but are not on the ministerial track at Cranmer Hall in Durham. And we have two, in our hub, we have two Yorkshire Baptist Association ministers in training. So it's a really good hub at Cranmer Hall. On completion of that, those people then go forward. Once they're called by a church or a ministry, then they enter into the newly accredited ministers um, period. That again is a three year phase. Um, both the ministry recognition and the, NASH and the NAMS period each have there are national guidelines for each and we have brought our processes into line with the national guidelines um, as of now um, and so that so we currently have seven um, NAMs in our association at various different stages and I guess the only other thing I want to say there is as we look to the future what what is your church doing to release enable and empower emerging leaders this is a big question that we have and it's a big priority for us as we seek to move forward and just quickly also to say there's two opportunities coming up one is an open day at Cranmer Hall in Durham on the 15th of March where there will be um, regional team staff and also Northern Baptist College staff and Cranmer Hall staff so it's an opportunity if anyone is interested to come along, see the college, hear about the courses and how they may be tailored to individuals, have a tour, maybe sit in on a mission and leadership seminar, which is available that day, and just an opportunity to meet staff and students. Um, I have publicity for that, which I'll make available tonight. Um, the second thing is a date to look out for, and that's an Exploring Vocations event. Um, these are, um, this is an, an event that we, that we put on um, it may not be to explore 
accredited ministry, but it might just be to, to look at what, what service you or people in your church may offer. Um, and what we'd really like you to do is to be thinking about who in your churches could you send along to these things. And the dates will be coming up soon. So thank you. That's me. Quick. Brilliant. Thank you, Linda. And, and you know, we're really grateful for all the work uh, that you do uh, in that. So I'm now going to hand over to uh, Paul, who's going to share um, about mission uh, with us. Hi, folks. Good to be with you. And thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Lots we could say about mission. I'm going to focus specifically on the priority that we've set aside and, and identified of pioneering and planting, something I'm absolutely passionate about. Uh, and regretfully, we've not, uh, as an association, maybe developed that pioneering culture and supported pioneers and church planters as much in the past. And we do want to say that, that from now on, we do see it's a new season where, where pioneering and church planting take uh, much more of a centre stage uh, in, in terms of what we're about and what we do. Uh, so... Uh, uh, three things in particular just want to identify, and then there's more stuff there on the screen for you to read. Uh, firstly, um, we've got a, a small group of us who are going to be pushing forward on a strategy for pioneering and planting, and all those in the group are, are, are pioneers ourselves. Uh, so that's the first thing that's going to be happening. Secondly, uh, I want to develop networks of pioneers, and particularly I'm working at the moment on, on, on a northern part of this uh, region uh, in the Tyneside area, are getting together people who feel they would value support from people from other churches who have a pioneer heart if that's any of you uh, uh do get in touch and let me know if you've not already been invited to uh, a meeting that we have coming up soon and then secondly in the in the south, south of our region the teesside area likewise if you feel that you're a pioneer or you have people in your church who might value being part of a network let me know we want to grow these networks of pioneers not just to support them but also that they can be catalysts within their churches to raise the profile of pioneering and church planting there's a whole spectrum of different ways in which we want to grow new churches new kinds of church new um, initiatives and then thirdly uh, I'm working specifically I'm hoping with with three churches in County Durham and I'm just discussing things with them at the moment to 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 go into these places regularly every single week to engage in in um, pioneering projects with them or to explore the possibilities for pioneering projects uh, and with these churches i hope to pioneer uh, a a way of working alongside our churches where me or maybe others who are uh, gifted in this area can come alongside a church and explore how we can reach out alongside your existing congregation maybe to start something new a new a church plant a new initiative a new missional community uh, particularly to engage with those people who are not going to walk through the doors of our buildings. Uh, so that will involve a lot of listening, listening to God, listening to the church, listening to the community. It'll be about identifying resources, uh, who are the people that might make this happen, and starting to build the, the structures to enable it to happen. So it's a longer term process, maybe a year or two, but uh, I, I'm, I'm open to do that with any church uh, as time allows. If that's something you would really like to pursue with me, do get in touch. As I say, I'm hoping to start it off this year with some churches in County Durham, three of our smallest churches that might not be around in a few years time unless something new is planted alongside. And so uh, from that base to, to grow that uh, ability to pioneer new things. Could say lots more. Uh, if you want to ask questions, do come back in the Q&A, but uh, uh, pioneering is definitely gonna be center stage for the coming season. That's brilliant. Uh, thank you, Paul. It's uh, wonderful to see your heart and passion for mission and pioneering released uh, in that way. So thank you for investing all that time in that. So what next? There's a, we've kind of uh, downloaded and dumped a lot of information on you there, but actually what is gonna happen in the next couple of months, you're gonna see the outworking of this vision and values kind of hopefully really impact you as ministers, church leaders, CYF workers and congregation members. And the reason we say that is because Paul and I are going around visiting all our churches and missional communities uh, to see how we can really embed some of this stuff into your local context. You'll also be seeing all the um, training and opportunities that are coming up. And so we don't want you to miss a thing. One of the things that we will be bringing uh, to you is a new e-news. Uh, once a month that will drop in your inbox. If you're not part of that, you can subscribe to that by heading to our website, or you can follow us on any of our social media channels. Um, so that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, 
uh, or our website. I think we're pretty much covered apart from Snapchat. Uh, and Paul and I don't want to do any TikTok dances. But apart from that, you can engage with us at lots of different levels. Well, thank you so much for listening. That's a quick 30 minutes of where we've been in the past 100 days uh, and where we hope to be as we change direction in our life here together.